for you know the indian skin can you recommend you know the the foods that we must have we should for skin and overall health i think the i mean obviously the most important foods from overall health point of view are actually saying things like you know green leafy vegetables um berries um nuts particularly walnuts and flaxseed things like that so so if you if you look at it in the biohacking your genes book there is a thing called the mind diet which can reduce your risk of alzheimer's by up to 50% right and and like everything else which is good for your general health ends up being good for your brain and if you look at it so there's a algorithm there go like an abc to rule on the a is avoid certain things and the first thing to avoid is avoid too much dairy avoid too much sugar and avoid too much avoid red meat as well right because we know that all those things increase your risk of poorer health and poorer brain health then b berries are particularly good like i say off all the berries there's slight variation blueberries the best apart from in india you may not get them so you may get just frozen ones things like that but berries are particularly good in india you get mulberries but generally berries are good and then if you are um a meat eater then actually as long as you're not deep frying it then chicken and chicken stock and things like that is actually um good for you um and then the d is like i said uh, are kind of avoiding dairy but getting enough vitamin d and the vitamin d either get it in your diet from if you are a fish eater otherwise you get it from supplements then the e is for literally everything which is green particularly the green leafy vegetables like you know all your your spinaches uh, the broccoli is all the kind anything which is really green or really highly colored um like if you're having potatoes ideally if you have the red potatoes see normal potatoes just touch but you have potatoes which have the red skin ones they're actually as good as the content of polyphenols is almost as good as a broccoli so but not the normal ones so the thing is is anything highly colored vegetables particularly your greens one of the issues is we don't have enough so that's why the mediterranean diet is considered very good because they have a lot of green salads and they have a lot of raw salads right i think part of the problem in india is we sometimes overcook everything to death that every vitamin is like has no chance of you know <laughs> trying to give you some benefit if it wants to right so so the reality is we overcook it so so the thing is so the is for everything green so and then nuts i think uh, then whole grains when rather than having too much um just pure rice or pure wheat the brown rice is better whole grains are better your quinoas and that kind of stuff are better and then in nuts nuts we know that are beneficial for you but particularly uh, tree nuts and not ground nuts so pretty not so therefore not your peanuts but and then you so therefore you're left with almonds and walnuts and things like that and cashews but there there's little differences cashews are a little higher calories then you're left with almonds and walnuts walnuts particularly ha- have omega 3 so it's particularly good for your brain like flaxseed almonds are good to fill yourself when you're eating as a calorie thing but it's not as good for you specifically as walnuts are so i think in that we've sort of covered an overall uh, you know diet and i think the what you've noticed here is there's nothing and similarly if you really love like i said you can always have one day if you really wanted to and if you were drinking alcohol then you limit it to one day a week or two days a week like, so there is anything in excess those kind of things like if you're having too much dairy too much alcohol any of those things are therefore bad for you but the rest of it what we just discussed generally gives you the gist of it because i didn't mention a single thing where we were saying eating a stuff out of a packet is probably the worst thing. There's one thing I probably don't do much of like if at all I'm buying stuff out of a packet it's literally something like quinoa or something which I'm then going to cook. I don't actually eat that salted snacks or this out of a packet or and and that's one thing for years I haven't done I can't remember last time I did. And I think that is a big part of help because in those snacks there is a lot of things which do you harm right and that's why i'm saying if 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 it increases the shelf life 
it reduces your shelf life. <laughs> Doctor, what about people who travel a lot for work or just like to travel? I think even then, I think nowadays, right, you can get everything anywhere. I personally think it's still a cop out, right? I just think we're not making enough effort. If it's a short travel, right, it doesn't matter. If you're just going a weekend or something, it doesn't matter. You can come back and live healthy the rest of the time and it's not a big deal. But I just think people just don't make enough effort because it's much easier for you to see you could literally cook something and keep it in your fridge these days and you can eat it over a few days or you can still vary your meals over and you can do it all on a weekend before you go whatever i just think there are lots of options now i just think we're very homogenous one of the reasons why our skin colors don't evolve anymore like they did in the past is also because our diets are all homogenous now we don't have these differences between folic acid vitamin D levels from continent to continent because wherever you go now you get the same stuff right you can go to london and you can get indian food yeah. thai food whatever everywhere in the world everyone's literally eating the same kind of stuff give or take some traditional foods but still mostly we're very homogenous you know and the fascinating thing about indian restaurants i mean restaurants in india is you get indian Chinese, Italian food, all in the same restaurant. Have you seen how elaborate the menus are? <laughs> I think it's just because eating is a big part of, um, you know, like it's a it's a big social thing in India, right? Like what I find is like when I come there, travel, and people are putting you up in all these hotels and things like that, there is an overabundance of like food, right? And, and there's also a lot of wastage, right? Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. Like I was at a um, first went Jaipur and there was a super five-star place and outside on the lawn they had all these stalls which were like you know this Italian food, Spanish food, Indian food, vodka, tent, whatever like it was just super like I've never seen as much food in my entire life you could not even sample you know you could just but at the end at the end of the day you saw them actually just dumping into the bins even though outside they were still, you know, you got people who, on the slums and things like that. I suppose they think you can't keep giving this because they'll get used to it, whatever the reason. But, you know, you were thinking there's just so much food. And I think it's a big part of that kind of, if you can afford it in India, then you do have an overabundance. Would probably like what you said, maybe people think when I go there that I'm, you're not <laughs> prosperous. The Kali system, you know, in Jaipur and in Rajasthan. You know, a little bit of so many things. And I think that's what people like. If you just give them one dish, they, they'll just, you know, make, they, they'll be disgruntled about it. Yeah, yeah, true. And, and I'm probably the worst person to talk about because I don't do justice to any of it. Like, because I'm not a big eater. So now, so, and I'm used to generally over years, if you get used to calorie restriction, you only eat that much. And you go there and there's this, all this and then people want you to have multiple and you already full, right? So you are the worst person at that kind of a feast because you don't do it justice anyway, right? Doctor, what about tea and coffee? Because in Australia and New Zealand, people are big coffee drinkers. In north of India, tea drinkers. South India, coffee drinkers again. Yeah, I think an interesting question about coffee is, I guess if you're having one cup of coffee a day or say, let's say maximum of two, then I think there's no harm anyway, right? But what I mean is generally we know, it's interesting coffee, 50% of the population from my genetic research shows that they're roughly fast metabolizers of caffeine and 50% are slow metabolizers. So if you're a slow metabolizer, then actually too much caffeine can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease and more anxiety and things like that. So we actually yeah. test people and we can tell them you need to reduce. But generally that's when you increase it beyond 200 milligrams of coffee a day. So to give you a guide, a single shot espresso is about 80 milligrams. Double shot once is Turkish coffee is 150. So roughly if you're having the strong coffee, like Turkish kind of coffee or some Indian coffees, then maybe you would say, don't have more than one, then nothing's going to happen to you. You don't have to test your genes to know. But if you are certainly having too much coffee, but if you're a fast metabolizer, that's actually good for you. The studies have shown some people have three, four, and it's fine. But if you're a slow metabolizer and you're having too much caffeine, 
then it's probably not good for you. So I think model of the story is really like in moderation, having one in the morning is generally fine. And we are not actually intuitive about it as human beings because we tend to get it from more our habit around us or our social things.